What's up guys, it's All Day Anthony, and there comes a time where a daily driver turns into a project car, and that project car needs another daily driver, and that daily driver just so happens to be free. So without further ado, this is my new rig. I know most of you might be thinking, Anthony, what in the hell is this and why do you own it? Why are you even showing it on the channel? This is the polar opposite of what any JDM fanboy would drive. And again, why do you, why do you have this thing? What's up with this truck? Well, there's quite the story behind this truck and I'm gonna get to that here in just a little bit. But this is my new to me 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 with the 5.2 318 Magnum V8. This has, 132,000 miles on it and it was free. This was a free truck. I know that sounds crazy, but trust me guys, it did not look like this when I got it. It did not look like this at all whatsoever. I have owned this for two months in secrecy, not showing you guys what this was because I wanted to get this truck to where I wanted it before I showed you guys on the channel. Now this is something I don't want to make a regular thing, but I thought I would at least show you what I have in case you see it in the driveway in future videos. So what we're gonna do first, I'm gonna walk around the truck, show you a before shot of what this truck looked like when I got it, talk about all the bits and things I've added over the last few months, and then we're gonna go for a drive and I'm gonna tell you guys the story. So when I first got this truck, it looked like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. I think you guys get the point by now, but it did not look like this, right? When I first got this truck, it was in non-running condition. It had a blown water pump that was pissing coolant. It had a bad thermostat. It had a bad serpentine belt and it had a bad U-joint and the diff needed a service. Overall, it needed a lot of work. Now, I got this thing up and running and once I got it running, I used it for moving and I used it for things around my new house and then I wanted to start putting a little bit of time, a little bit of money, I'm talking a little bit of money, to make this thing a clean, new, daily-ish driver. Now, when I say daily-ish driver, this is not replacing my Civic, this is just an extra tool that I have for doing junkyard runs, moving things, things like that, because, let's face it guys, the only cars I have are small cars and I can't fit big shit in them. So this thing is gonna be more of a tool, and you might see it on the channel every once in a while, but this is not replacing the Civic, don't worry, the Civic is still gonna be here, and if anything, this is gonna help me make the Civic an even better Civic. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I did to this truck once I got it running was replace the mirrors. I got rid of the Mickey Mouse ears that it came with factory and I put on these big old seven by 10 tow mirrors because I'm towing just a bunch of shit. No, not really. I just got these because I like the look of them better. I think they just looked a little bit nicer on the truck and I wasn't a fan of the Mickey Mouse ears. Now if I was an asshole, I would ride with them in this position right here where, you know, just towing some big old shit. But no, I'm not an asshole. I'm not gonna drive around with my tow mirrors out because I don't have to compensate for anything. So anyways, mirrors were one of the first things I did when I got the truck. Like I said, I think it brought new life. I think it just made it look a little bit nicer overall and made it look more like a truck. Now following that was a replacement front grill. I ended up actually pulling this from my local junkyard for about 15 bucks. It was in better condition than the one I had. The one I had was just chipping and falling apart and this one was just nicer. So I replaced this for 15 bucks and overall I think it looks pretty good. It's a little dented in towards the middle there but eh, whatever. There was new headlights. I needed to do something about the headlights. The OEM ones were just super yellowed. I polished them out and they looked a little bit better, but ultimately I wanted something uh, with a black housing and something that looked a little bit nicer. So what I ended up doing was getting more eBay special headlights. And then once I got them, I put paint protection film on them just to prevent them from yellowing because all aftermarket headlights tend to yellow after a few months. So I did that and then I replaced the bulbs with LED bulbs. These things are pretty effing bright. I'm talking like 
really bright, but they look really cool. I really like the color temperature of them, uh, and I think they complement the truck overall, making it look more like a truck. And on the subject of lights, I also replaced the third brake light with a smoked LED. Uh, the one I had on there was just busted and did not work at all. Uh, so I replaced it with this, and I think it looks pretty good. The black and silver theme looks pretty good on this truck, so it kind of just complemented that overall. And yeah, pretty cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks. Then, because I'm obsessed with finding deals, I found this fourth gen bumper from a 2017 Dodge Ram. Now, this is a popular conversion. A lot of people like doing the fourth gen front bumper conversion. However, I guess it's very controversial amongst like the second gen owners, and I don't really understand that. I don't really know why, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. I guess there's, there's a big following for second gen Rams that I did not realize until I joined some groups, and then I just realized there's a bunch of sacrilegious shit that you're not supposed to do to these things, but overall, I think that the fourth gen bumper looked tasteful. I picked this up for 50 bucks, bought the conversion brackets, bolted this bad boy in, and it looks pretty awesome if I say so myself. It's a lot of chrome. It's, it's, it's a hell of a lot of chrome, but uh, who knows? Maybe one day I'll color match it. Maybe one day I'll wrap it or do something different, but um, overall, it's in great shape. It was basically a brand new takeoff from a 2017 as he switched the bumper to something else, and 50 bucks can't complain, especially when it came with the lower valence. Now before we get into the fun stuff, there is one major visual improvement that I cannot overlook, and that would be the paint. Now when I first got this truck, it was so heavily oxidized, that the paint literally felt like sandpaper. It hadn't seen a wash or wax in years. It was in really, really, really rough shape. Now one thing I did, I did a test spot and I polished out some of that paint after sanding it with 3000 grit, and I found out that I could return a little bit of luster and a little bit of shine to this paint to give it a, a semi-gloss finish is what I like to call it. And then following that, I did the rest of the truck with the help of my friends at work, and then we coated it in G-Technics C1 and XO. So now this truck is literally ceramic coated, and it feels like it, and it kind of looks like it a little bit, but ultimately it has really good hydrophobic properties and just looks a ton better than when I first got it. On the topic of ceramic coating, we also coated the mirrors in G-Technics C4, we coated the rear bumper, and rear uh, tail light guards or whatever the hell you'll call these uh, and also in C4 so basically all of the black trim around the entire truck uh, was protected in some type of uh, ceramic coating of some sort so basically everything on this truck has been coated minus the front windshield the next thing was replacing the front windshield it had a massive crack going from one side all the way to the other side and a new windshield pretty cheap I think I paid uh, roughly a hundred bucks for a new windshield uh, and it turned out really really good now because this was a retired forestry service truck, there was a ton of green showing through this roll-on bed liner. Uh, that was pretty cheaply done, but you could see a bunch of just green paint underneath uh, the bed liner itself. So I ended up touching this up just by a brush and going through and touching up any spots that really needed it, and it turned out much, much better. All right, all right, all right. So now it's time for the fun stuff. So as you guys can see, it is sitting on a new set of wheels and tires, and it's also sitting quite a bit higher than it would stock. Well, this all started when my friend Scott from Koenig Wheels saw that I got this truck and saw that I was beefing it up and was so kind to send out a set of Mamba M22 wheels from their parent or sister or, or brother or child. I don't really know what it is, but Mamba and Koenig are owned by the same company. So he sent out a set of Mamba M22s in 17 by 9 it with a negative 12 offset and from there I was on my own in sourcing tires so I ended up sourcing a set of tires locally uh, that were on sale on Facebook marketplace that came off a 2019 Rubicon and I ended up getting five wheels and five tires off a of Rubicon for 800 bucks now two of the tires had 500 miles on them and the other three had 5,000 so naturally I put the uh, 5,000s up front and put the 500s in the rear and these things are literally like new but these these wheels, dude, they're so sick. They are, they turned out so much better than what I thought they were going to be. Um, and I think that the actual height comes out to about 33 inches. So it's on 33s, not 35s, unfortunately. But uh, they're 285, 70, 17s, and they fit these Mambas beautifully. 
Now on the subject of wheels and tires, in order to make this setup work, I needed to order a leveling kit. Now this is something that was completely new to me. I know coilovers, I know springs, I know things like that. Leveling kits are something that is totally alien to me, so I had to do a lot of research to find out which was the best budget-friendly kit that was also decent quality, and I ended up finding the Rough Country kit. So I did the two and a half inch leveling kit uh, on the front, and I did the blocks on the rear as well, and I did the install myself which was new and it took about a day and I kind of had some uh, I had some speed bumps but it kind of all worked out and uh, I, I think I did an okay job but uh, I didn't film any of that so don't look forward to seeing any of it it was just kind of a, a lot of cuss words uh, a lot of uh, bloody knuckles things like that but I ended up getting it on so front and rear leveling kit by Rough Country really cheap really budget friendly I think I paid 200 bucks for it uh, and it worked out perfectly so this wouldn't be a truck without an exhaust, right? So with this being my first truck and my first V8 I've ever owned, naturally I needed to put an exhaust on this thing. So I took it down to my local uh, muffler shop and I had them do a muffler delete on this thing, replacing it with a glass pack. And I wanted to do a tip, but they, I guess they forgot to do it. So I do have an exhaust on here with a muffler delete and it does sound pretty damn good in my opinion. It sounds actually pretty beefy. And so um, overall, I really like it. It's pretty throaty. It's the perfect mix of uh, the low grunt without the rasp. So basically it's not too loud. It's not too quiet. It's just perfect. I like it exactly how it is like this. So with the exterior done, let's talk about the interior just for a hot minute. Now, when I got this truck, this interior was probably one of the most disgusting interiors I have ever seen. Uh, my sister-in-law, who had owned it, uh, really didn't take the best care of it. Let's just say she treated it like a truck. I, I can't blame her because when the truck looked like how it did, um, she probably just said, whatever, what's the worst that can happen? So when I got this truck, the entire interior was covered in trash. The floors were absolutely disgusting. Um, I had to go through an entire day of detailing and really transforming this interior uh, to get it to where it looks like now. And uh, it turned out pretty damn good. I'll show you guys some before shots here so you guys can see how bad it actually was. Um, it was it was horrible. I had to pull the seats out. I had to pretty much gut everything. Uh, and it had some horrible smells, horrible stains, different spills from God knows what. Um, but it all cleaned up really, really well. And thank God for um, rubber floors. These things, uh, a, a godsend. I, I don't know what I would have done if that was carpet. So basically everything cleaned up really, really well. And one of the key features of being a second gen Dodge owner is having a crack dash. Now, when I first got this thing, okay, I'm, I'm done. But when I first got this thing, basically this entire dash was completely cracked. It literally had holes in it. It did have a carpet cover, um, but it looked like ass, smelled like ass, and I wanted to replace that. So I ended up doing the dash skin cover here, which is basically a complete shell. It's a complete cap that goes over the entire top of the dash, um, covering all the old cracks and things like that, the cracks and crevices, as I should say. Um, and it made it look like new. I think it looked Looks pretty damn good if I say so myself and I actually just did this the other night so I'll probably have to check to make sure everything adhered properly but uh, other than that though still has some cracks here this is broken but it kind of kind of holds in, in one way shape or form um, the front speakers do not work at all whatsoever but the rear speakers do which is great so I did a little Bluetooth thing since this has a what I like to call a cassette player here you just put your all your stuff in there you can put food and crumbs you can actually put a pop tart in there um, anyway did a little Bluetooth thing through the radio so I can actually listen to my music but uh but yeah nothing crazy manual windows manual locks uh, but it works now, surprisingly, the rear seats are in killer condition. I, those are something that I really just had to do a deep clean on, remove some uh, old caramel that was melted on here and whatnot. Uh, but these look pretty damn good. They cleaned up really, really well and look kind of like a new seat. This is a vinyl. This isn't leather itself. This is just more of like a vinyl material, um, but it's meant for uh, rough stuff. So it's meant for workers. It's meant for uh, people getting in and out that are dirty. It's easy to clean. And so that all cleaned up really, really well. Now, the front seat here. I did reupholster, reupholster. Basically, I, I took off the old leather cover because it was cracked and you could see all the foam underneath and it looked like absolute ass. Um, so I ended up ordering this off of eBay as well and replacing that and get, making it look, I mean, pretty much like new. Now, these seats, 
for some reason have this weird green hue to them and I cannot figure out why the hell that is but it's both on this seat and that seat over there and I don't know if it was like an overspray situation I don't know if it was from maybe this strip right here with the Sun baking on it I, I have no idea but uh, anyway so that's the interior guys nothing too crazy um, I want to do a stereo maybe eventually inside here just so I can enjoy music uh, from the front speakers as well um, but overall that's it I apologize if I'm rushing through a lot of this and not giving you guys as much detail as I would normally give, but I'm trying to rush through it because I want to get to the main story. I want to tell you guys how I came about this free truck and why I own it. So now that you guys have seen kind of what I've done to get it to where it looks like it does now, um, we're going to hop in the truck, throw on the GoPro, and go for a drive. Alright guys, we're on the road and it is finally time for story time. I've waited two months to tell you guys the story of how I came into this truck and I'm really excited to share. Now, to begin this, we need to start from the beginning. This truck started its life off as a forestry service truck. From about 2001 to 2005, six-ish, it served the Idaho Forestry Department in which I believe it was really maintained in their ownership. From there, the truck went to auction and that's when my father-in-law bought it. Uh, keep in mind, when he bought it, it was still forest service green, which was kind of like a ugly thin mint green. It, trust me, not the best looking color. So he decided to get it repainted in what could have possibly been the cheapest single stage silver paint I've ever seen, hence why the paint oxidized so bad uh, and why it was so rough. But anyway, the truck was a different color and he was pretty happy with it. He ended up using this truck for about 10 years as kind of like a side vehicle, doing truck things with it. Uh, he used it for managing his rental properties and things like that. Fast forward to about three years ago and he gave it to my sister-in-law. Devin, if you're watching this, uh, you might want to plug your ears. But he gave it to her because she needed a new vehicle, hers broke down, so he gave her this in her ownership um, she did all of the i guess proper maintenance that she needed to do but ultimately the truck was pretty neglected it just it wasn't washed the interior was absolutely filthy like i explained it was just in really really rough shape and so i, I like to think that probably because she just didn't care about it she thought it was just an old dirty truck so she treated it like an old dirty truck uh, which is why it got so bad uh, i'm sure she probably added a few dings and dents along the way and and whatever but um, overall though she still kept up on the maintenance she still changed the oil in those three years and so uh, i can't blame her for that anyway the truck started to have issues uh last winter about last December is when it started really having issues. Uh, had a blown out water pump, bad thermostat, bad serpentine belt, uh, and basically the repair cost was really, really racking up and to the point where um, the quotes that she was getting uh, were pretty outrageous and she kind of deemed it basically unworthy to fix and she was ready to send it to the junkyard. I mean, literally, she was literally ready to send it to the junkyard. That's not an exaggeration. She was really planning on scrapping the truck at that point. So she ended up parking it at an apartment complex that she actually doesn't even live in anymore and where it sat for eight months broken down. Basically the truck uh, could run and drive. Uh, however, it would overheat after about 30 seconds um, and it would start steaming and it was just a whole shit show. And so she didn't want to deal with it. She parked it, she ended up getting a new vehicle and she had talked about giving the truck to me and my wife to see if we could fix it up or take it to the junkyard. So it was kind of two of those options. So they asked me if I was interested in getting the truck and seeing if I could fix it up. And to be honest, I knew what the truck looked like. I really had no interest in doing anything to the truck because it just, I don't think it was worth my time or money. Um, but I decided to take on the project eight months later. Basically, uh, come August time, I finally got the keys for the truck. She gave us the title and she's like, good luck, you know, do whatever you want with it. And so, uh, that's when I started to, to, to really uh, get serious about trying to fix it up because that truck was worth nothing to me in the state that it was in. So I really wanted to at least get it running. So if I wanted to sell it, I could sell it. Now keep in mind when I was given the truck, this was during my whole move that I was doing from one house to the other. So I had little to no time to work on the truck myself. It basically sat in front of my yard for a couple days and then I said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to send it to a mechanic friend and see if he can fix it up for me. Um, so he ended up doing a new water pump, thermostat, belt on it uh, and got the truck up and running, which was fantastic. And I believe he only charged me like 300 bucks, which is just an insane deal. And so. Uh, for my time, I thought that that was definitely worth it. And so 300 bucks later, I had a running truck and that's where I was kind of left with the question of what do I do? I just saved this truck from the junkyard. It's a free truck. How much more money do I put into it? 
So from there, the interior was so disgusting that I found that I really couldn't sit in it for longer than 10 to 20 minutes. I knew that it needed a major detail and that's when I needed to go through that whole process of doing uh, my Anthony deep clean. And so um, went through the whole truck, get it, oh my gosh. Sorry guys, this is a really bumpy ass road. I think I'm gonna turn around. I didn't realize how bumpy this was gonna be. So anyway, I ended up gutting the entire interior of the truck. I removed the seats, I removed everything, and I had to do a really, really deep clean, essentially uh, removing old stains, cleaning up a ton of change, dirt, dust, I mean, you name it. It literally had a milkshake that had been spilled on the back seat that sat for at least eight months and uh, it was pretty rancid guys. It smelled absolutely horrible inside this truck and so uh, the deep clean was definitely necessary. So once I got the truck's interior looking good and looking you know, worthy enough to sit in, uh, that's when I thought, hell, what can I do with the exterior? The single stage paint is so bad. Is there anything that I can do to even remotely make this better? Um, so I did a test spot where I ended up sanding the single stage paint with 3000 grit and then going in with a compound and machine uh, and basically buffing everything out. And I found that I could essentially make the the matte finish more like a semi-gloss. Not a gloss, but like a semi-gloss. I'm having to hold down this damn drink holder here to keep it from rattling. But basically, it, it, it had some sheen to it, it looked pretty good. And so um, I talked my friends into work at also helping me with the truck. So we ended up doing a full polish on this thing uh, and getting it to where it looked pretty good. I mean, we sanded down the whole truck, polished it out with several machines uh, and got a little bit of luster back. And then from there, that's when I decided to uh, go above and beyond and do an Anthony thing and then ceramic coat it. So I coated it with g Technic C1 and topped it with uh, their XO V4, uh, which added some really good hydrophobic properties, a little bit more gloss, but ultimately just made the truck easier to clean. So when I wash it in the future, it would just be a little bit nicer. And that's when I kind of started going down the rabbit hole, right? And uh, this is when all of the, um, all the research and all this stuff on how to make these trucks look good really started coming into play. And as you guys know, I have a really hard time not getting attached to uh, materialistic things, right? Uh, hence the Civic, right? The Civic was a really bad example of that or a really good example of that because uh, it was something that wasn't really worth a whole lot, but look at it now and it looks awesome. So I told myself I wasn't gonna do that with this truck and I just wanted to get it to where it looked better and it was a little bit cleaner and not get attached to it because there's much better platforms and much better trucks out there uh, to invest money in. But with that said, that's when I started doing some research. I found out that you can put a fourth gen bumper on a second gen, which is uh, totally sacrilegious and people totally hate on it, but uh, hell with it, dude. I think it looks pretty badass. So I ended up doing that. Uh, I acquired new headlights, started looking into uh, different type of leveling kits and other different type of mods and whatnot. And so, uh, and that's where Scott from Koenig reached out to me and said, hey dude, I see you're beefing up this truck. It is looking a lot better. Let's put some Mambas on it. So uh, we threw the Mamba M22s on, I sourced the wheels and tires um, and it just started coming together. I mean, everything started looking really good and it started really looking like a, like a pretty badass truck. And that's where it was just kind of crazy, man, because like I, I basically looked at it as this truck was legitimately going to go to the junkyard if I wouldn't have taken it, right? They didn't want to deal with it. That's how much they didn't want to deal with it is they just said, hey, you either take it or we're scrapping it. And I am super happy I took it, man. I mean, this truck has 132,000 miles on it. That's it. It's insane. It's insane. And everybody that I tell that I got this truck for free, they just are, I don't know, they're amazed. They just can't believe that this truck for the age still has the low mileage, um, still runs fantastic. And uh, overall, man, free truck, dude, you can't beat that. And so is this going to replace the Civic as my daily? No, that would be a horrible decision. This thing gets horrible gas mileage. I filled up like three days ago and I'm already close to empty. Um, I think it gets like 10, 12 miles to the gallon with the V8 and uh, just not worth it. With that said though, this is a good second vehicle um, for when I wanna drive something that I don't maybe wanna put the Civic in, right? If I'm taking a route in the Civic that has a shit ton of speed bumps or has a hard parking lot to get into, I'll take the truck over the Civic any day. And so um, if anything, I like to treat this thing as probably like a tool. Um, everything from you know helping with things around the house to picking furniture up, things like that. Um, but also I think that this will be super helpful um, for when I do start getting really serious about the Civic and start getting into the whole motor swap. Um, 
whatnot and everything that I want to do in the future. And so I think that this is just going to be an extra vehicle that I can have um, and still not have to uh, resort to daily driving the Evo when that time comes. And so um, overall, that's kind of the story, guys. I mean, basically, it was a truck that was uh, treated like a truck, looked like a truck, wasn't anything special, um, was on its way to the junkyard. I got it for free and I invested, I don't know, 1500 bucks all said and done once you kind of even out the things that I bought and sold. But um, for 1500 bucks to have this truck, I can't beat it. So yeah, guys, that's the story of how I came into this new uh, daily for my daily driver. I mean, going from the junkyard to being in my hands and fixing it up for uh, little to no money, um, I think it turned out pretty damn good. Now, some of you are probably wondering, Anthony, did you film any of this stuff as you were going along, you know, doing any of this stuff, filming how-to videos and whatnot? Um, and no. And there's a reason why I didn't do that. I did not want you guys to get attached to this thing. I don't even know if you would have gotten attached to it, but I didn't want to make this a, a, another feature in the channel, uh, mainly on the fact that it's just so different than everything else I've done, and I don't know how well it would have been accepted, and I also don't want you guys to get that attached to this thing because I don't know how long I'm going to have this for. I could have it for six months. I could have it for six years. Um, I just want it to be something that I can use for a little while, and then maybe down the road I can upgrade to a nicer truck. So anyways, guys, Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit different than my other stuff as it is the polar opposite of all my other JDM toys, uh, but still, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So as always, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's all the Anthony. Peace.